Self-storage is big business and helps create space in our overcrowded homes. Oh my goodness. As we thought, it is actually a load of rubbish. But some have taken their storage hoarding too far. We had her cremated and the vet put her in here. Clinging onto things they never see or use. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And it's costing them a fortune. We spent about £80,000 in total, which is just... I try not to think about that. I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. This isn't looking good so far, is it? I'll be asking hoarders to unlock the doors of their units. Right. Empty out their stash. <laughs> I'd like him to skip that. And choose to either keep it, skip it, or sell it. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems. His original violins can fetch hundreds of thousands of pounds. Yes! To take to auction and make some hard cash. In today's show, we meet the boys. As we uncover childhood memories. My goodness. 1965 Toy of the Year. Hey, it's Kermit. Get instrumental with the clear out. This is worth an awful lot to me, this. I will yes. not part with this. That is so cute. While hoping to hit the high notes at auction. Happy with I'm that? Amazed, yeah. Are you? Welcome to Storage Hoarders. I'm in Yule and Surrey to help two temporary storage hoarders see the error of their ways and turn some of their belongings into hard cash when they keep it, skip it or sell it. Our first hoarder is IT consultant Paul Gregory. Over the past 11 months, he's spent over £2,000 on storage. His fiancée, Maddie, thinks the money could be better spent elsewhere. What I want to know is, how did it come to this? Originally, I thought it was going to be a short-term uh, project of mine for a couple of months. Paul and Maddie live together in Banstead, Surrey, a timeless village immortalised in H.G. Wells' classic novel, The Time Machine. Unlocking the storage is a bittersweet prospect for Paul because the contents contain recollections all of their own memories of lost loved ones. Unfortunately, I lost my parents not that long ago. Um, my father, nearly two years ago, and my mother just coming up to the, uh, the first year. And I wasn't willing or prepared to throw their worldly goods away. First couple of months, you think, oh, well, you can, you can bide with that. But then after a while, it becomes a, a bit of a burden and it becomes more and more expensive. It's now on a, a direct debit that's going out of the account and it goes out so much easier now that you don't realise that you're paying for something as, uh, as much as you would do. And we could do with the money for the wedding, really. Paul and Maddie have plans to tie the knot in a few months, but with Paul's income tied up in storage, they feel now is the time to sort out their unit and free up some cash. The time is right for intervention now, as Paul's had the unit for a long time, um, and we need the money towards the wedding. I have to decide as well on whether or not you're going to have um, a couple of bridesmaids. Well, my sister, definitely. Paul wants to do what's right for his future wife, but he also wants to do right by his parents. Once the storage unit has been emptied, my mother and father will be, uh, I think, pleased with what we've done, rather than just throw the, the contents of their storage away. Opening up the storage unit will stir untold memories for Paul. Can I help put the past behind him for a baggage-free future? Tell me about it. How long have you had the unit? I had the unit now coming up for about uh, 11 months. Was it the entire contents of the house that went? A good 90% of it, yeah. Wow. But the things we've got in the unit now are things I don't really want to throw away. They're more, they're more sentimental things, so if they go to a good home, it'd make, uh, make me happy. So, Maddie, tell us what you think about all this. Um, initially, it's a, it was a great idea putting everything in storage, but as time has gone on, it's obviously now getting expensive and we need to, to deal with the, the situation. So, how much do you think is the value of the goods in the unit? I think in total, it'd be about £600. How much have you spent on storage so far? Well, storage has come to over £2,000, so, as you can see, it's mm, not going to cover the cost. Up, no, it? it's uh -huh. not going to cover the cost. Now, if there, was, if there was something hidden in there that was a... Uh, 
something of, of real value, maybe, then we'll see. But mm -hmm. uh, as where I stand, I don't think it's going to cover the cost, mm -hmm. no. So it's time to kick the habit, really, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice to. I am really looking forward to getting stuck in. I'm sorry, I'm just such a nosy person, but I just love the thought of just looking at all the stuff that your mum and dad had. And so can we just get started? Yeah, yeah. sure. I really hope I can help Paul convert his family relics at auction into a happy day at the altar. Our second storage hoarder in need of my help is Lee James. In the past six years, he spent nearly £10,000 on storage. But how did he end up here? I had to downsize from a five-bedroom house to a one-bedroom flat, which is where we are now, and I think I did it physically, but not mentally. Having downsized his home, musician Lee has been living in Epsom, Surrey, birthplace of 60s pop sensation Petula Clark. He's a natural-born hoarder, a muser with a passion for guitars, but the sound of cash falling through his fingers can't be music to his ears. I know I'm a hoarder because I've got too many things that I'm not using in storage. How many drum kits do you need, Lee? And really, do you only need one? So to have three is ridiculous. I'm not a professional drummer, so why do I need so many? Lee's one-bedroom flat may look tidy, but it's neatly crammed with evidence of his passion for music. And there's plenty more where that came from. I access things on a, on a regular basis for my storage, and I'm constantly having to move a load of stuff back just to get to the thing that I need, and um, I really want to change that. I need an outside force to shift me into gear. Lee sounds like he wants to change key, but can I strike the right chord and get him downsizing? So, Lee, what have you got in storage? Music equipment from an old studio. I used to have a studio, and I've got stuff that I use, drums and guitars, instruments that come in and out. How often do you come here? Through the course of a week, three or four times. Three or four times a week? Yeah. So you really kind of use the space. Yes. But is there a lot of stuff that just sits there not doing anything? Yes. And that's what you want to shift? Completely. So do you want to sell some of this stuff? Yes. Do you know how much value you have in your storage? Thousands. You've got things worth hundreds. And how many of those do you think? There's at least one drum kit and four maybe five guitars. Are you attached to these instruments in any No, way? not at all, no. You're not? No, I like to change. I like, oh. to, like to constantly change. So presuming we make some cash from the items that you want to sell, mm. what, have you got a plan for the money? Yeah, I'd like to uh, sort out my own storage, perhaps buy a garage or something. That's interesting. You like to keep your work stuff separate from home, do you? Absolutely, yes. So, Lee, it sounds like you're well up for this. Completely. It's great. Let's go and see what's in your storage unit. Hey, let's go. I've got high hopes for Lee. With my help and a bit of luck, he'll switch from hoarder to owner. We've met our so-called storage stopgappers. Now it's time to peel back the layers of their lockups. Coming up, Paul dips into the past. That was me. That is so lovely. While Lee locates his feminine side, and both hope to locate enough value in their stuff to make money at auction.
welcome back to Story Childers, where I'm helping two stopgappers lighten their load. Earlier, we met Paul and his fiancée, Maddie. After his parents passed away, Paul put their possessions into storage. 11 months on, and he's ready to empty the unit and put the money towards their wedding. While musician Lee has found himself six years deep into a storage hobby that's left him nearly £10,000 lighter. Later, our expert will cast a discerning eye to evaluate their stash for auction. The time has come for Paul to raise the storage unit door and lift the lid on his memories. Right, here we go. Well, that's been interesting. Let's see what's in there. I forget now. It may not appear to be a huge amount, but it's a lifetime in boxes and a daunting prospect. I think they might need some encouragement. Doesn't look so bad, actually. I've seen a lot worse, let me tell you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think this is really doable. Le well, let's get started, actually. Why not? This is going to be a long trip down Memory Lane, and straight away, there's a handy reminder of his dad. Got all these tools these here. These are some of his tools that he used to tinker around with. There's a bit of stuff, there's some gardening things there as well. Oh, there'll be some surprises for you in here. I think there will be, yeah, absolutely. Some of them I haven't seen for years, and... Uh, I think uh, it's going to be a trip down memory lane for me for some mm -hmm. of these things. Oh, what's this? Oh, look, one old penny each, toffee apples. Yeah, that was... Um, I got from school, and this was a uh, saying I keep my, um, my toy cars in when, oh. I, was, when I was young. <gasps> my goodness. Um, hey. Yeah, some of these are hey. quite old, as you see. I think the expert's going to be very excited when she sees these. I really do. You've still got the boxes. This looks like the receipt. Oh, it's like it's um, the Corgi Model Club. Yeah. It's a great collection of toy cars, including something rather special. This, this one is the one that's... Uh, is it 007? Yeah. James Bond. This is what... Um, Someone got a little bit nervous about even me opening the box. Because, really? Because he said that whatever you do, with the, don't do any damage to the box. It's the in box mink, matters. It's mint condition. So when was the last time you had a look at these cars? Well, the last time some of these cars saw the daylight was over 30 years ago. So, really? Yeah, these are uh, yeah, very, very old cars that oh. uh, some I even forgot. Didn't realise I had. You know what? We could waste a lot of time looking at these. We better be yep. very strict with ourselves and put them away and I carry so. on. We can see them later. We've yeah? got some other things to get on with, yeah. I think, for now. Yeah. Paul's immersed in the heady days of his youth. I just hope he's not driven to distraction. Now it's time for Lee to open his unit and face the music. It's stuffed to the rafters, an Aladdin's cave of toys for the boys, and I think this boy's going to need some help. Hi, Lee. Hi, oh. again. Oh, it's absolutely chock up block, yes, isn't it? Is. it? Yeah. Let's get the ball rolling. Now, I'm loving, loving, loving the colour of this. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't look old at all. No, it's not. I think it was used once <gasps> and wow. stored. So, um, are you thinking of selling this? Definitely, yes. Ooh, mm. great. And this is a massive thing. Oh, I can't shift it. OK, let's move that. Thank you very much. OK. How are you feeling about the task ahead now, about getting all this stuff out? I'm all good. Feeling good about it. You're feeling quite cold-hearted about it, are you? I'm pragmatic, is the word I think. Ooh! <laughs> Marvellous. OK, that's brilliant. Let's get stuck in, then. OK, let's go. It's time to sort the nicks from the knacks. To help our storage holders, I've asked them to sort their belongings into three categories. Keep it for those items they really want to hold on to, skip it for any rubbish that's a waste of space, or sell it for the items that could recoup some cash. There's also a charity bin for anything that's too good to throw away. I found them the space they need to get decisive with their items. Hey, it's Kermit. They've only got a few hours, so I want them to act with their minds and not with their hearts. Let's start over here. Um, there's a drum kit. That's to go. A Russian book, 1953. Old cello. That's to go. That's all Sal. Do you Sal? Well, they might do. They're a pair. They're a matching pair. Just stamp something. 
Paul's spread resembles his parents' 1950s-style living room. All that's missing is a wireless. It should be a breeze to sort through. Lee's, on the other hand, is a racket of messy testosterone, a boy's own arsenal of all things noisy. I'm excited. I'm hoping to turn it into cash. This is a Morse code set. Yes. Only boys know about this. Right, this must be about 40 years old. I used to play with that. Did you? I did. They're my mates, yeah. Should we put them over here, then? Yeah, put them on the uh, cell side. I think this is an old gas mask bag, and here are all kinds of badges. Wow, what I used to collect. Got the Beatles. We got the set. Oh, look at that. These are definitely selling. Paul appears to be making good progress sifting through a mountain of childhood memories. I'm pleased to see how healthy the cell pile's looking. It's really good news. Yes, it's, it's, it's actually grown bigger than what I thought. Are you surprised about all the toys you've come across? It's a toy shop, isn't it? It's stepping back to the uh, mid-60s, I think this is, definitely. And you've had such fun looking at them again, haven't oh, you? Oh, it's been like I've been going back to my childhood. And there's some in really good condition as well. They still work and everything else. And they haven't been open for, for years and years and years. Most of Paul's toys have made it onto the cell pile, but it appears the cars are for keeps. Are you hanging on to these cars? Well, I'm interested to get a valuation, a yeah. clear-cut valuation yes. on those, just to see what decide. we're talking about. And what I, that will make me decide what to do with them. I think Paul needs to find out more about them, so I've called in antiques lover Julian Anderson-Price to have a look. What's really interesting is this one. Now... James Bond films were thought to be adult films, mm -hmm. so toys weren't made for them until Goldfinger. Goldfinger was a hugely successful film, and therefore, toys were made for it. This toy came out almost a year after Goldfinger and about two or three months before Thunderball was released. Gillian's convinced there's real value in Paul's toy cars and thinks a specialist needs to take a closer look. She's taking Paul, Maddie and some of the cars to London's Portobello Road Market to meet toy expert Andy Morant at his stall. Hi, this is Paul and Maddie. Hi, how's it going? Yeah. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you, yeah. <laughs> He'll be able to tell if Paul's collection is in top gear or entering the pits. Paul's collection. Yeah, he's got some very nice bits there. He has, yeah, hasn't yeah, he? Some very nice ones really there, yeah. interesting pieces, I yeah. feel. Vintage toys are in big demand and as collectors become more discerning, the value of some common toys rises. Andy specialises in toy soldiers, but what attracts people to a stall are the vehicles. Of course, it's the James Bond Aston Martin that's caught his eye. 1965 Toy of the Year. And there should be, if I can take this out there, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've still got it, a little... Yeah. There's a secret thing in the bottom there. Secret the instructions. Well. This is it. This is, this is what makes these things really good. If you've got them in this condition, in this type of box, you got the spare man and the secret instructions. They're always the things that go missing. Mm, that's, mm. that's what really makes these collectible, is have all the bits with it. Mm. Lots of us have toy cars left over from our childhood. Gillian wants to check on what will give them added value. All the things we need to look out for are rarity. Yes. Condition. Prime. Condition is so important with the box and all the accessories that go with it. Can you give us a little bit of <laughs> yeah. a kind of retail valuation on these? That's worth about £100, that one. This one here is worth around the £140 mark. Most of Paul's cars are worth anything from £30 to £140. But what about the Aston Martin? Will he get money penny or end up like Dr No? This is really in vogue at the moment. Um, these things in that condition, you'd be looking about £350 for that one. Mm -hmm. £350, maybe even a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's by far the best. Right. Well done. Okay. <laughs> £350, that is fantastic for something he's had boxed away since childhood. So, is Paul tempted to sell? Certainly the James Bond car, I, will, I think my son would appreciate that if I, if I hand it over to him. He hasn't even seen it yet, believe it or not. So. <laughs> Back at the unit, Lee's orchestrating his musical stash with a cell pile taking shape. Sadly, so is his keep pile, while well, the skip and charity piles are looking rather sad. Lee, I'd love to see these guitars. Can we kind of wheel them out and have a really good look at what's what? Of course we can. What's what? yep. It's quite interesting, because 
I mean, all your stuff, more or less, in your locker is musical, isn't it? You haven't got any other household stuff. No, it's are a working very, storage very unit. Yeah. It really yeah. is a working storage. So can we have a look at some of, of these Of course we can, yes. This was the first thing that I got, saved <gasps> up with birthdays and Christmases. This is a vulture. So what makes it a vulture base? That's uh, just the, the, the night, the, what it, what they called it. It's but this, is, this has been modified gorgeous. by... gorgeous. How much is that worth, then? Uh, not very much. The electronics are worth a bit. Um, but this is worth an awful lot to me, this. I will yes. not part with this. So that's Lee's first guitar, obviously not for sale. Other guitars include a vintage 80s Fender worth up to a grand, not for sale. And a custom Fender Stratocaster worth up to two grand, also not for sale. Do I sense a pattern evolving here? Please tell me these two are for sale, Lee. This one's for sale. This one for sale. Yes. OK, let's have a look at it. Tell me about it. It's another Fender Precision. Looks very battered. How much do you think you'll get for it? Um, 500 English pounds sterling, please. Mm. Any less? Possibly. If you, have you got the cash? Well, at least he's selling something. And then Lee surprises me by revealing metal of an unheavy kind. Is this up for grabs? Not a guitar! Yeah. What's going on? This is good for you, isn't it? Do you play the spoons, though? Unfortunately not, no. No. Oh, wow, this looks amazing. This is incredible. Yeah. What is it? I mean, I know what it is, but where does it come from? OK, this was from a, a shop, and I bought this because I like old stuff. Um, and this was presented to XPC Stanley mm -hmm. by his colleagues in the public carriage department of the Metropolitan Police on his retirement after completing 25 years service in December 1930. Oh, so it's an amazing book. 1905, he joined the police, Golly. well, that department of the police force, and mm -hmm. uh, this was their gift to him by, by recognition of his service. Wow. So. And you're happy to sell this? Yes, I am, yes. Good. Definitely. I think Lee is slowly getting the hang of this. The clock is ticking for our storage holders, but there's just enough time for one final push. Looks like all, looks like all playing no work. Hey. What's going on here? Oh, I think this, this, is, Too busy playing. this is a treasure trove. <laughs> and the Dan Dare pop-up book that was my dad's. I'm not tempted to get a price for this. This is um, very special to me. They've stared downsizing in the face to put a conclusion on the clutter. Lee has unbelievably managed to add a few more instruments to the cell pile but his keep pal seems to have won the day. Paul, on the other hand, has sifted through sentimental reminders of his parents and put plenty of childhood memories on the cell pile. But there's one item in particular he'll be hanging on to. This, uh... It looks like a baby's bath. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite old, this. Uh... Oh, it's lovely. I love the colours. Yeah, this is a, a baby's bath, one I used to... Uh frequent quite often when I was... Uh... It's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I'm sure that's worth something. Yeah, and just to prove it as well, I've got this here. That was me having a oh, bath in it. That is so cute! That is you yeah, in the bath. in that same bath. Oh, that's so strange, Yeah, it's weird, it? isn't it? Yeah. So, Paul, when we first spoke this morning, you seemed to be quite sort of detached from things and, you know, it was just an exercise, we were going to get on and do it, la, la, la. And now everything's come out of the boxes. It's a, quite a different story, isn't mm. it? You're seeing everything from your childhood. This picture of you as a baby in the bath. Mm. It's very different now, isn't it? It is. There are some things I still want to uh, get rid of here. Um, mm. but I hope so. some of the... Um, <laughs> Some of the other things, uh, you know, the more sentimental things, it would be a little bit more harder to, 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 to detach yourself from it. This is a really big deal, going through all this stuff, actually. You've got three lifetimes worth here. It's been a very poignant day for Paul, but with Maddie here to help, I think he's done really well. Coming up, Paul's getting into the swing of things. Oh, play, play, play with you lot, isn't it? That is an absolutely fantastic toy. Love it. Selling. Fantastic. And Lee adds money, money, money to his musical numbers. You're liking this? Yeah. It's got a nice rhythm to it, isn't it?
Welcome back to Story Chorders. I'm here in Surrey where I've been helping stock gappers fine tune their stash by asking them to keep, skip, or sell. Now I want to know if there's anything of value in their sell pile. First up is Paul. He's not only sorted his mountain of memories, but even found time to play around. Expert Gillian Anderson Price has had a love affair with antiques for the past 10 years and knows a trick from a treat. But will Gillian find anything of interest among his playful pile to send to auction? It's all play, play, play with you lot, isn't it? That is an absolutely fantastic toy. Love it. You have got some fantastic toys. Not only are they really nostalgic, they're also fantastically decorative and everything seems to be in not bad condition. Definitely big lot for auction. I'm really, I'm frightened to say 10 pounds or 100 pounds, but there's certainly money here. What do you think, Paul? I like the latter number rather than the, <laughs> the four number, but uh, how would you sell them? Would you sell them as a train set? Would you sell them as electrical? toys or would you sell them as a, as a lot, as a group lot? Well, I think, first of all, you've got to take advice from your auction house because sure. they know their market. Remember, every auction house is going to be different depending on, on, on their own location. Mm -hmm. Most of them are online, so hopefully you're going to attract, you know, more global kind of um, mm. business mm. bidders. Um, I think these can make quite a bit of money at auction. It's just all very interesting and decorative. So you've got kind of a slightly double hit there. Mm. Mm. OK, interesting. From the gems among the toys to the real thing, Paul has a lot of jewellery left to him by his parents and grandparents. There's some gold, there's some silver, there's some pieces with missing stones. So what I'd like to do with this is we really need to go through it. You need to decide if there's anything that's sentimental value that you absolutely have to keep. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it we need to sort into two piles, um, scrap or maybe auction. I actually feel that in the present I don't, economic climate that it might be better to scrap than to auction. Mm -hmm. Gillian has had a careful look through Paul's inherited collection of jewellery and one piece in particular has caught her eye. This is 18 karat gold, hallmarked for Birmingham. It's got four missing stones, two sapphires and two diamonds. Mm -hmm. Sadly, these rings today are worth more as scrap metal but their value will certainly boost the wedding pot and could even go towards new rings for Paul and Maddie. Paul, what do you feel about scrapping the rings? Well, I know from my, from my family, my aunts, um, that there are some sentimental rings in there that go back to my, um, my nan, my mother's mother, um, engagement ring. Yeah. Uh, and that's the one with the missing stones on. Oh, so right. well, oh, there's, is it? there's a lot of sentimental value in that. Well, you know, in that case, you know what might be nice is if you scrap the dross and fix the sentimental one. Mm, that's a good idea. You can yeah, use the money idea. from the scrap to have this one fixed and then yeah. you've got something really nice to pass down. Yeah, yeah. So Paul has an interesting collection of items. The ones Gillian has selected to go to auction are the vintage badges with an estimate of 40 to 60 pounds. There's a stamp collection estimated at between 20 to 30 pounds. And Gillian is recommending taking all the toys. The value will depend on what ends up in each lot, but the total could be as high as 200 pounds. Something else that has been passed down to Paul is an interesting coin collection. You've got a box of quite a lot of coins in here. Some very ordinary, what have we got here? Um, old pennies. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not valuable but you have also got some silver sixpences. And they're the ones I used to put in the Christmas pudding many years ago. Exactly. Right, right, right. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. They're so cute. And then you've also got a oh, half right. sovereign. Yeah. Now, I don't know what, what sort of half sovereigns are making at the moment. No. You know, gold prices go up and down, condition is important. Uh, so I don't really want to put a valuation on this right now. Coin collectors are referred to as numismatists. Millions of coins have been minted over the centuries. Many of us have jars full of old coins dating back decades, and it's easy to assume that they're worth more the older they are. The fact is, few are worth more than their face value. Like any antique, the value of coins depends on rarity and condition, 
and resisting the temptation to clean a coin will ensure it retains its best price. The world's most expensive coin is the flowing hair silver dollar, an American coin minted in 1794. In 2010, it sold for a staggering five million pounds. Among Paul's small collection of coins is a gold half sovereign, which in the current climate could be worth around 150 pounds. Paul has decided to hold on to his collection of coins as an investment and hopes they'll go up in value. We've come to Chiswick Auctions in London, where Paul is flying solo with the rest of his family memorabilia. Has it been quite an emotional experience for you, going through all the stuff after your parents Oh, yeah, incredibly. Yeah, very much. There's been quite a few memories opening some of these boxes and things, and uh, even just some of the, the furniture and, and mm -hmm. some of their, my parents' belongings, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Has that been difficult, or...? Uh, yes, it has, yeah. But not regrettable? You know, I'm sure Mum and Dad would be looking down on me now and they wouldn't have wanted me to hang on to things just for the sake of hanging on to it. Oh, that's a good thought Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yes. a nice warm feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. With Paul's lots about to go under the hammer, there's just time to find out what auctioneer Matthew Caddick thinks of them. Paul Gregory's items are a good eclectic mix of collector's items. So what you've got here, it's not all about value. We're talking about things like stamps and so on. They are quirky collector's lots. We know there's people out there for them, and at this sort of price point, we should be able to get them away. Paul's chosen to hold on to his coin collection as a future investment. But has he made a decision on a James Bond car? It's worth quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. uh, we we reckon, mm -hmm. oh, I'd say between three and a half and four hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. And my son, I'm going to give it to my son for when he appreciates it. So you, know, you never know, it might be a bit of an investment for him later on down the line. That's very nice. Does he know he's getting it? No. Not yet. Not yet. Now no. he will. He will now, yeah. yeah. So what do you think your high earner here is going to be today? I don't know, the badges might be a bit interesting, because it depends who you've got in the audience. So the car is going to end up with the sun and will hopefully continue to go up in value. Time to see what Paul is going to sell. First to auction is the stamp collection. Small collection stamps. Small but select. I've been already at £10, I'll take 12 in the room. 12 there, 15, 18. 20's here with me, 22. Are we all done on selling at 20 pounds? Okay, 20. 20 pounds is not bad for a small collection of stamps. Next up is a selection of Paul's childhood games. Start me 30 pounds, then we'll see where they go at 30 pounds, start me. Uh, right. 30 pounds, thank you, take two now. At 30 pounds, 32, 35, 38. Okay. 40, 42. Thank you. Forty-five. Mm, it's going there. Going, it's going the right direction. Forty-two pounds. Are we all done and out at forty-two pounds? Forty-two pounds is a little below the lowest estimate, but it's still done well. Next is the Airfix model kit and racing track. Hopefully, a car enthusiast in the crowd will be tempted. Nice collector's lot, fifty pounds. Five if you like. At fifty pounds, no further interest on fifty pounds. Mm. Not quite enough at fifty pounds then. We'll have to pass that lot. That's disappointing news for Paul. So will his final lot, the vintage badge collection, sell? Including uh, badges. John, Paul. Does it feel funny seeing them up there? Yeah, it does, actually, yeah. Start me £40 for them. £40 is bid and five I'll take. At £40, take five now. At £45, oh, £50, really? five. Bit of £55. Can I sell them at that £55? We all done an out at £55. Good. Take that one off. Yes, I £55. think we're very happy I think the presence of the Beatles did help those vintage badges fetch a nice press of £55. That will have been a start to trimming his storage. Are you looking to clear your unit completely? I'm hoping to, in the next couple of months anyway. Mm -hmm. It's certainly got me in the right frame of mind now to, to mm -hmm. clear it out. Will you take storage again, do you think? Yes, I would, because I think it's for a good reason. Talking to various people, they've all got different stories. Mm -hmm. and um, each person have got a, a different reason for having a lockup, mm -hmm. a storage unit. So uh, I think they are a working part of our lives now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, whether or not I'll have one for the sake of having one, no, it'd, it'd have to be... For a reason. For a reason, yeah. yeah so. mm -hmm. But they're a good idea. So after commission, Paul made £107.64 at auction. If he can continue to empty the contents of a storage unit and close it down, he'll save the £2,400 annual cost. 
that can't be bad, bearing in mind he's also sitting on some valuable childhood toy cars and those inherited coins. So Maddie can't be with us today. What do you think she'd have made of all of this? I don't think she would have been too surprised about the things we've, uh, or the money we've got, the total we've got. Planning a grand wedding and honeymoon on that? Um, I think, don't think grand's the right word, <laughs> but it will go towards something. Yes, it will, won't yeah, it? Maybe so... an extra night. <laughs> yes, Who knows? absolutely. A good dinner anyway, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Paul may not have made a fortune, but he has made a start in the decluttering process. It's also given him an opportunity to unlock precious family memories and look forward to married life with Maddie. Coming up, Lee loses the plot. No idea where they are. <laughs> but will he make sweet music at the auction? Oh, You're liking this process, aren't you? Very much, yes. And welcome back to Storage Hoarders, the show that clears through your unwanted clutter in order to make some serious cash. Earlier, we saw Paul Gregory sorting through a stack of childhood memories and sentimental reminders left since his parents passed away. He's now well on the road to clearing out his unit and putting the money made from auction towards his wedding. We all done it out at 55. Here we go again. It's now time to catch up with Lee James, who has a big collection of musical instruments. He wants to keep only the things that he gets the most use out of. I know I'm a hoarder because I've got too many things that I'm not using. If he succeeds, he'll be reducing the hundreds of pounds he spends annually hiding it all from view. Antiques expert Gillian Anderson Price has had a good rummage through the contents of Lee's storage unit and has found a few items in need of further scrutiny. So Gillian, what are you thinking about Lee's stuff? I'm thinking it's all very musical and all fairly new. Am I right? Yes, thank yeah. you. Are. Yes. Most of it seems to have been acquired in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years or so. Yeah. Interesting guitars, not massively valuable ones. No. Yes, you've got Fender, but they're not old Fenders. They're not kind of top quality, custom. Interesting, you've got some kind of drum machine in here. Yes, that is interesting, that one. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, it's much better than a drum kit because it comes in a box. And this one in particular, I believe, was used by Rupert Hine for the One World Project. Be amazing if you can prove that, because Rupert Hind obviously produced some really big stars, Tina Turner, and I'm, I don't really know too much about him. 
Yeah, yeah, he was a very successful producer. So if we could get the provenance, mm. and we could actually prove that he used it, then yeah. I think we could make a, a little bit extra money, yeah. which is always great. Dig out some documentation. Absolutely, that would be amazing if you okay. could do that. You've also got some microphones. This one's yes, actually right yes. here. I mean, they just look cool, don't you yes. think? Yeah. So how much um, would this be worth, does anybody know? I think we need to see a specialist with pretty much all of the musical equipment. I'm sure you're absolutely right, yes. Now, you've got one other thing which doesn't quite match with all the musical stuff, and that is this canteen of cutlery. In its original box, yeah, around 1930, very typically 30s wooden box. There are four knives missing. No idea where they are. <laughs> no. Otherwise, it's absolutely immaculate. Have you seen mm. how clean I know, it is? I know. I know. It's, it's, it's lovely. The knives, lovely everything. Condition. It's never been in the dishwasher. It's been really nicely taken care of. It's lovely. <laughs> Apart from the, the few missing bits and pieces. Sadly, it's not sterling silver, or else we could have just scrapped the lot and made a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> it's all plated, but it's still really interesting, nice and clean, and there's a lot of it. A minimum of, a, of 50 pounds, hopefully twice that. Julian has taken a good look at the items Lee's looking to shed and suggested he take to auction the box of 1930s cutlery estimated at 60 to 80 pounds, the microphone, which is hoping will raise 100 to 150 pounds, the electronic drum machine estimated at 70 to 100 pounds, and the full acoustic drum kit, which could bring in anything from three to 500 pounds. Lee still isn't sure about his other items, some of which may go to auction. To help wheedle out further gems from his collection, I've sent Lee to see guitar specialist Charlie Chandler at his shop in Kingston-upon-Thames. There's a huge market in second-hand guitars, so hopefully, Charlie can help with the value of some of Lee's instruments and perhaps take some off his hands. Ah, uh -huh. so what's the story? Um, I'm not sure I really want to part with the whole thing. I like this end, but not this. It's all wrong, isn't it? Yeah, essentially Stratocaster body, Telecaster neck. So what, what you're thinking? Put a Strat neck back on it and have it as Leo intended? Yes. OK, cool. The Leo the boys are referring to is Leo Fender, the famous designer of Fender guitars. Since electric guitars came to prominence in the 50s, other names including Rickenbacker, Gibson and Ibanez all helped to change the face of popular music and have led to the rise of guitar heroes such as Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Mark Knopfler and, of course, Jimi Hendrix. Now Lee's brought out something familiar. Yes, it's that battered old guitar he tried to sell me for £500. OK, this is a, an interesting... It's a, like a bits of, what we call a bits of guitar, made up of, of parts that... It's a, a copy of a Fender Precision Bass, but it's uh, never been near the Fender factory. Do you think it's, it would go through the shop? Yeah, it will sell. Oh, that's good. Um, well, we can use the money from that to go towards the, yeah. the other one. So what's it really worth? With the case, maybe maybe ticketed at 350 and you might take, Be flexible, have yeah. to take a bid on it, really, I think. Well, that's still a lot of money, and if it does sell, he already has the cash earmarked. Today's been really productive. What I've decided to do is sell the um, bits of bass, the Relic Precision bass, modify the Strat Tele, and sell half of it, keep the other half. Thanks very much, Charlie. Pleasure. Nice to see you. I think I'm going away with a good feeling today. Let's hope Lee brings that good feeling to the auction room where the rest of his boys' toys ensemble will soon be going under the hammer. Now, Lee, auction day. How do you feel about everything possibly being sold today. Very excited about that. Really? Yeah, yeah I don't want to keep it, so... Fantastic. Yeah. That's good. So happy to let it go. Definitely. Have you sold any of your other items, either online or...? I have, actually. Have yeah. you? Yeah. What have you sold? Um, I've sold a, couple, a few guitars. A few? Some of the ones we took to Charlie's, they went. Um, two bases definitely went. Great, so you're consolidating your items. Definitely, yeah. Marvellous. <laughs> Before Lee hopefully makes some more money from his lots, what does today's auctioneer think of them? 
These items are a combination of musical instruments and some cutlery. It's 1930s oak case, not too much money to be frank, they're not too uh, clever in the marketplace at the moment, but he should do okay with that, we're not asking the earth. If particular interest is the drum kit, um, I had a hand in setting the thing up and I can safely say, although we all had a bash at it and sounded awful, it's fantastic, it's a good, clean kit. I'm hoping that we're gonna get phone bids and we're gonna get people who don't normally come into an auction house. I mean, it's good gear. It's nicely presented. It's been on show for three days now. I would expect that we're going to see a nice result for him today. So here goes. The first lot up is the cutlery. Interest, who of me at 70 pounds? I'll take five in the room at 70 pounds, take 75. 80, five, 90, five. Add 90 pounds, five if you like, in the room at 90 pounds on the foot. It's good. Add 90 pounds. Yeah, Happy that, with that? That's a good start. Great, yeah. it's a very good start. 90 pounds is a great result, just above the top estimate. Now it's time to see if that microphone will sing. This is the uh, condenser microphone and mount, and uh, it is this case. Yes. And I've got interest here with me, and I'm starting at £100. I'll take 110 now. At £100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. You'll bid at £150. Are we all done and selling 150? £150 is another good result, bang on the top estimate. Let's see if we can keep the rhythm going with the drum machine. A bit of classic uh, and, uh, equipment. Here. Two bits here with me on the book, and I'll start here with me at uh, 80 pounds. I'll take five in the room. 85, 95, mm -hmm, 100, 110, 120. You're liking pounds, this process, aren't you? Very much, yes. Are we all done then? 120 pounds. The book gets it. 120 and selling. Wow. Fantastic. Happy with I'm that? I'm amazed, yeah. Are you? Yeah. What's well, not worth that? No, I'm sure it's worth it. It's <laughs> worth it to somebody who, you know, likes yes. that kind of thing. Yes. Lee is clearly on a roll. £120 is above the top estimate again, and more of his boys' toys also sell, including a bass unit, an electronic keyboard, some guitar parts, and even a damaged electric cello. But now for the big one. Will that drum kit find a new drummer? Interest here with me at £300. I'll take £320 in the room. Oh, it's a telephone bid. At £300, 320 340 360 Excellent. At 340 with me, take 360 if you like, Val. 360 380 <laughs> 400 400 420 is my last, would you like 440 I'm out on commissions at £440. Are we all done and out? At 440 and selling at 440 Excellent. 440 I'm pleased with that. It's brilliant. Mm. What a result. That's great. £440 for the drum kit is an amazing way to end the day. So, Lee, what do you reckon? I think we did great, don't you? Yeah, very well, actually. Do you know your total was over a thousand pounds? Really? I'm impressed. So you've got shot of your goods mm. and you've made a good lot of money as mm. well. Totally. After commission, Lee has made a grand total of £1,016.60 from the auction. And when he eventually downsizes his unit by half, he'll save over £800 a year. That is a great result. So tell me what's happened with your unit. I've got great news for you on that front. Mm. I've got the storage so I can get to everything. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I'm looking at downsizing even more. Oh. So I may be able to do away with the unit altogether. I'm certainly going to halve it within the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. So have you bought anything else since? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I have, yeah. And what are you doing with all that then? Well, what I've done is I've tried to like up the quality of the things that I've got. So now you've got quality instead of quantity. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Particularly in your line of work. Totally. What I set out to do, I've done. Yeah. So I'm happy. I think you've done really, really brilliantly. Thank you. I can see that your attitude towards the staff has changed. Yes. You've got shot of a whole lot of things that you didn't ever use. And also, you made lots of money into the bargain. Yeah. You're on a roll, aren't you? I am. Mm. Yeah. Fab. I'm really proud of Lee. By selling a lot of his instruments, he's orchestrated a few pounds in the pocket and downsized his storage space. Well, there you have it. Our storage hoarders are no longer in denial of their hoarding habits, plus they have some extra cash to put towards their dreams. Don't forget to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.